Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. We have an amazing achievement to chat about today, so stay tuned. Now on this show, we get to see some truly amazing uh, ascents yes. and achievements, and this next one is it's an absolute cracker. For years, climbing K2 in winter has been considered one of the last great feats in mountaineering. Standing at 8,611 meters, K2 is one of the most dangerous mountains in the world. Climbing it in winter adds huge complexity, extra dangers and sheer brutality to the mix. For a few weeks now, we've been talking about the teams in Pakistan attempting the summit push. There have been many expeditions at base camp and news emerged over the weekend that a 10 strong all Nepalese team have achieved what we know no one has done in the past. That summit in winter. Comprised of three teams joining together for the summit push, it's an accomplished list of climbers. Amongst them is Nirmal Perja, leader of Team Nimsdai, who last year climbed all of the 14 8,000 meter peaks in just over six months. Now, last week we were chatting about that huge storm that ripped through Camp 2, destroyed a whole load of equipment and they were regrouping. And I didn't really expect that summit push to come this weekend. It sort of came out of the blue a little bit. Yeah, yeah, same. I mean, a turn of events, what, four or five days and they were at the top. The best story I've heard or read about it is that they all waited for each other to then reach the top together. Like, I don't know, it's just heartwarming. It, it was heartwarming to have a, an all Nepalese team, perhaps mm. some people in there who, who weren't as celebrated as they should have been. Yeah. Awesome to see that. but. Look, with any kind of mountaineering story, there can be a flip side to this. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, on the same day, uh, Sergi passed away. As reported on Planet Mountain, on the same day that the 10 Nepalese have summited K2, Spanish mountaineer Sergi Mingote passed away. Sergi was attempting to climb the mountain without supplemental oxygen and had already climbed seven thousanders in this style. According to Chang Dawa Sherpa from base camp, Migote suddenly fell while descending from camp 1 to advanced base camp. A sudden movement in his GPS tracker suggested he took a big fall. Dawa Sherpa explained that Alex Gavin and Tamara and two other Polish climbers gave him help in ABC, but unfortunately it was too late. One of the reasons that whole K2 uh, summit attempt was sort of delayed a little bit was because of that death. Uh, and obviously our hearts go out to his friends and family. And sadly, we have to talk about more sad news. Yeah, because one of our Epic TV ambassadors, Etienne, and good mates with Enrico, unfortunately passed away in the Dolomites last week. 27-year-old ski instructor and mountain guide Etienne Bernard passed away due to an avalanche in the Dolomites. Some of his belongings were seen the evening before and search and rescue teams started the search and the next day he was found. He was an accomplished mountaineer and young prodigy, becoming a mountain guide at the early age of 21. Let's hear some more from his dear friend Enrico. Etienne was, uh, was a friend. It was a uh, mate of a lot of adventures. And uh, it's hard to, to accept this situation. And I want to remember him with, uh, with a smile, the same smile that accompanied us during the adventures. And the smile that uh, I saw in him every time. I hope uh, he will continue to protect us from up there and uh, I want to say hi to Etienne and all of friends uh, of Eti. Grazie mille Enrico. Yeah, it's always sad, uh, especially sad, especially poignant when some of that close to the Epic TV team passes away yeah. and he will be remembered. Uh, we've got Young Gun climbing news now and 11 year old Theo Blass, he's been at it again. Theo is only 11, but he's been making some big waves on the climbing scene with his hard sends. He was the youngest climber to send 8C and he's done another 8C, Guerre de Issure in the south of France. He's been training hard through various lockdowns and it's exciting to see his progression and understand what might come next. 
We had a big epic TV video uh, a couple of weeks ago on Climbing Daily. Uh, it's had uh, over 100,000 views yeah. looking at that first 8C. We have some things planned uh, for young Theo, so uh, oh. watch this space. Like his first 10A? We'll yeah. be there to film it. <laughs> 11B will be there. We'll just follow Theo with the camera at all times, just, just in case. <laughs> anyway, we're moving on to another inspiring story from Austria. As reported on 88.nu, Roland Wagner has sent Sen Schucht a 9A slash plus in Salzburg land, Austria. At age 41, this is his hardest route to date. It took him 30 days and he had to wait for the perfect conditions. Yeah, so I find this story very inspiring because, you know, it gives us time till we're in our 40s to send 9As. I feel, find these stories get more poignant as I get older. It's like 41 seemed like <laughs> a long way ago. Now at 34, it seems like just around the corner. So um, it's actually, I'm just like, yes, I have hope. Seven years. Seven years. Seven. Oh my gosh, I need to get training. Now, my next story is a kind of cool one to finish on. And it just shows that climbers will always go climbing. Paraplegic climber Lei Chi Wai has ascended 89 stories of the Nina Tower in Hong Kong. This story has been reported on widely through the mainstream media. He used a fixed rope and was in his wheelchair the whole time. It took him just over 10 hours to climb 250 meters, attempting the feat to raise money for spinal cord injury patients. Lai was left paralyzed from the waist down 10 years ago in a car accident. Before that, he had been crowned Asia Climbing Champion and ranked 8th in the world. Although he didn't complete all of the 300-meter tower due to safety concerns, it's a special achievement and raised over $600,000. So cool to see him having his accident, being such a climbing champion and then coming back, continuing to climb. Uh, awesome achievement and a cool story. Yeah, from this awesome story, let's move on to the 9B counter. We still sort of haven't decided about the 9B counter. Um, there was some people saying that we should strip it right back down. Some people mm. were saying what you said which is more, more counters. counters. <laughs> Please don't do more counters. And as I'm always right. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to make a decision on this. We will, I promise, by next week. Uh, there's nothing on the 9B counter anyway this week, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll arm wrestle, we'll fight, we'll look at the comments, we'll make a decision. Next week will be the final what's what on the 9B counters. <laughs> Welcome back, Flo. Hello. Thank you very much. The casting couch. Uh, I like the fact that during this little break when we were rearranging, you put on a load of jacket and a hat. Terry's got a scarf on. Uh, I did not down jacket up here. It's cold in the office. It's very cold. It's, it must be like, I don't know, minus 10 or something like that. <laughs> At least minus 10. It's snowing inside here. It's a real problem. <laughs> yeah. Flo, uh, Climbing Daily Edit this week. A uh, bit of a look back. Bit of a, yeah, we've got Charlie Bosco, old school uh, Climbing Daily presenter. Uh, now is IFSC commentator, but now is the end of his uh, career as IFSC commentator. I mean, not the end of his career, but you know what I mean. Like he's uh, moving on to newer, bigger, and better things. And so we did an edit, just kind of um, explaining a bit how his five years for the IFSC. Here's a little clip. And that huge and expectant crowd is here in the arena in Munich. What a place to be! Where else would you rather be in the world? Over the course of five years, obviously, I've been to. I don't know, 70, 80 World Cups and World Championships and Youth World Championships. There's been a lot of action, but I think there's probably three moments I would pick as the real standouts. The first big moment, I think, was Adam Ondra winning the Lead World Championship in 2016 in Paris. Biggest arena in France, best climber in the world, last climber out, last event of the entire World Championships, first top of the route. That's left hand, needs to go with the right, then he'll swing over with his feet. Right hey, Adam. Top. Hold. Come on! Come on, Andra! Is Adam Andra the greatest climber of all time? The argument is over. Adam Andra, lead world champion 2014, lead world champion 2016. All right, so Flo, I wanted to ask you about the edit there because obviously we try to do different things with Climbing Daily. We didn't have a huge amount of video, a lot of photos, a lot of merging of stuff. That's quite complicated to do. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit complicated, but we got the super dream team, Matt Groom, Teresa Corti. News team, assemble! Hey, Ryan. What's up? Yeah, watch the full video, links down below. Uh, content couch number two, and it's Cold House Media. Yeah, so it's Josh and Charlotte in Red Rocks, just generally having a good time like they always do. 
Badass climbers, here's a little clip. Come on, Jess, reach it. <laughs> hi, Charlotte. Yeah, hi. Hi, Lewis. Hello, Red Rock. Thanks, Flo, for joining us on the content couch. No worries. I mean, it's not my first choice. I prefer being behind the camera or the computer, but here I am. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Shop stuff time uh, and sale time, winter Ooh. sale time. Terry, how much can people save? Uh, up to 60%. So spend your Christmas bonus. <laughs> I mean... Did you get yours in the post? Uh, no, but I have all the mountaineering things I need. That's true. That is true. We are kitted up. But if you're not kitted up, head over to the shop. Links down below. Grab a bargain now. And with all the sales stuff, as per usual, once it's gone, that's kind of it. We're not going to restock the sales stuff. Yeah. So if you see something that's good, get it because it might not be around the next day when you kind of have to think about it. Man, I've done that so many times when you're like Amazoning and you're like, yeah, you know what it's like. So just do it. Click, commit, get yourself some gear. Do it. Do it! Uh, comment of the week time. Oh, uh, are we going to do the dancey thing? We're going to do the dancey. I, I can do a little jig. Okay, cool. Okay, ready? I'll sip water in the meanwhile. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Comment of the week. What's your comment? Uh, I've got one from Marcus. Uh, okay. Now, Marcus says a lot of stuff, uh, but he ends on... Uh, Maybe ask Teresa for help with a style makeover for you. Uh, she looks really badass in this episode. You were rocking that leather jacket thing last week. I was looking a bit ropey in a jumper. This week I have busted out my best uh, stylish jumper because it's kind of a hoodie, but it's like a, a rough hoodie. As in, like, it's got a, is that a rough? Is that your best jumper? This is my best jumper. Okay, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I can help you out, but we'll start with shoes. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Huzzah. So from the bottom up, shoes up. I'm wearing Sorrells right now. You can't... You, can, you, can you look at that? That style. Style? Okay. Debatable. Right, okay, fair enough. Uh, Terry, what's your comment? My comment is from AR. So I'm gonna say Arnold uh, Rodriguez, mm -hmm. um, and he says it's always it always confuses me that Flo looks so Italian, but has a hard British accent. Could you please have an Italian accent, Flo? Flo, do you have an Italian accent? He's just um, he's doing the hand He's doing gestures. this, and that's it. Uh, what I want to know is what is a hard British accent? Like from London. 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 Flo, like, but Flo's from Brighton. Really? Oh is he? Who knows? We'll find out. Stay tuned. Uh, this is like a soap opera. Next week we'll come back with Flo's origin. <laughs> It'll be amazing. Uh, that is it, uh, Teresa, for the news. We're done. Sorted. Uh, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back next week. We will be. See you soon. Have a lovely weekend. Thanks, guys.